Today is Friday, and here I tend to clean on Fridays. Um, I like to go into the weekend with a clean house. Um, most people save the weekend for doing those last minute cleaning and those cleaning projects, but I like to go into the week weekend with a clean house and then try to just keep up throughout the next couple days and then Sundays. I always try to go into Mondays with no laundry starting the week. So I try to um, get my cleaning done on Friday and have all of my laundry done and caught up by Sunday night and put away, folded, all that stuff. And so as I was like sitting here, I'm, I'm mopping the floors currently before I run to the bus stop. And as I'm sitting here, I have one little guy eating a snack in the high chair. The other two are playing over here and I'm taking the moment to clean the floors because they are terrible today. And so I was reminded of um, <clears throat> someone who was, I once heard that the, ref the way your house is, is a reflection on what's on the inside. And I know that everyone has different personalities and that sort of thing, but I could not agree more with it. If my house is a disaster, I feel inside like a disaster when I just want to scream. And so other people might, you might not feel the same way. That's just how I am. The reflection, the house is a reflection on what I feel on the inside. And so if my house is clean and tidy, I feel ready to go for the day. I feel good. I feel solid. If, um, my house is a mess, then it's, I just feel a little chaotic that day. And so I always try to go into the weekend because I know we're going to have a little more devoted family time going into the weekend with a clean house. So, um, Fridays are a day for me for cleaning. And so I also want to just tell you, um, about why, you know, like how I, how I manage to, um, clean. Um, I have five kids. And it's impossible, impossible to keep the house clean all the time, everywhere. And so I prioritize the rooms that mean the most to me. So for me personally, when I walk into my house in the front door, I want that area to look like I want it to look. Um, so for me, that means my living room area and my kitchen dining room table area. When I walk in, that's the first thing that I see. And so those rooms, I choose to fight for. I choose to fight for those rooms and keep them up cleaned and um, up kept because those rooms are important to me. And then after that, it's the bathrooms because we all use the bathroom, right? And regularly, every day, it's not really a room that you can avoid. And so when I walk into the bathroom, I want my bathrooms to be clean. That's just me personally. And so um, I, the kids' room, I might get to cleaning them up once a week, but I let them pretty much keep their rooms clean. They make their own bed um, and all that sort of thing. But the their rooms, the play areas, I let them go for the most part, even though they are messy. And yes, they can be cleaned every day, but I choose to fight for the rooms that are most important to me. So as you're cleaning and you're going through your crazy schedule and your weekly routine, Fight for the rooms that mean the most to you and the ones that are gonna, you know, help you through your daily, you know, through your daily walk of life, right? So choose the rooms that mean the most to you and keep them clean. music something that you find super motivational whether it's worship music or a certain kind of um a certain type of music like hip-hop or something you know like more upbeat or maybe you just like the jamming out to some, some country music find something that you absolutely love that gets you motivated and blast it in the house and a little note with kids is either a you'll find them dancing or B, sometimes it tunes all the noise and the chaos out. That's 
a little hard to focus. So um, find a type of music that you love and that you enjoy and make it a little louder than normal when you're doing your household cleaning. One thing that I love to do whenever we're, I'm trying to finish some stuff up or cook dinner is have my kids do get together and do art pictures. There are different channels on YouTube that have you teach kids how to draw. And so today we are drawing, what are we drawing guys? Dirt bike. A dirt bike today. Da -da. Da -da. I guess mom. mom like Looks this. good buddy. Tonight we are having tacos, so um, I am going ahead and while they're drawing and Axel is down for a nap, I usually like to prep dinner. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm already starting the meat, the taco meat for this, and I will start chopping up the lettuce and the tomatoes and getting everything ready so that I can just pull it out of the fridge and set it on the table whenever it's time to eat dinner then. Okay, so this video is about a 12 minute video um, tutorial for them to do, but with, with the pauses in between those, with them pausing and just making sure they have their picture right, um, it takes about 30 minutes. And so I would get the meat all complete and I have all of the stuff out for tacos and then all I do then is I'm gonna stick that stuff in the fridge and then all I have to do is make rice and some beans before we um, are ready for dinner and we're good to go. Makes the night a little bit easier um, with prepping it and preparing ahead of time so that when the time comes and the baby's awake and everybody else is a little full of energy and hungry at the same time, it's ready and good to go. Okay, so um, when it comes to dinner time, we really value um, sitting at the table together. And I know that probably sounds a little old fashioned to some, um, but that's something that um, Ethan and I both have done, we had to do when we were kids, and that's something that we value and we implement in our families is that we all sit at the table together and eat dinner time together. And so, um, however, what I have found helpful in that process is whenever you have multiple young kids, sometimes it's really, really, really challenging to get everybody's food on their plate, especially if they're not quite old enough to do that themselves. And so, or if it's just easier to do yourself. Um, so I, any chance I get, I tend and put their plates together for them. So I do this before I even tell them it's time to eat so that whenever it's time to eat, they come to the table and at this stage in their, um, in their, um, at their age, it's it's already there, it's ready to go, and then they wait until we can pray together and we sit and eat. And so um, that is one tip that I have found really incredibly helpful with a lot of kids. I just make their plates up for them. It also eliminates the confusion. Of course, you get to know your kids, you know. As life goes on, you get to know their likes and their dislikes and stuff like that. And so um, I have made them according to what they typically put and typically like. Um, and um, sometimes whenever you pre-make their plates as well, it takes away the option of things and so if there is a vegetable or um, some sort of like side that's new to them you just put it on their plates and they don't have the option and everybody has it on their plates we're all gonna try it and so that also I have found that's really helped us when it comes to dinner time